All right, this is where I left off, which was kind of an unfortunate place, right? But I'm starting to build my refined storyboard. I found the middle moment within my frames, and I double-checked that the size was 8 by 8 inches by 100 pixels per inch, and I double-checked that my rulers were set to inches, so I can see those 8 inches right there. And then I used my move tool, clicked on my ruler, and brought guides around to each side. That is important. They'll lock to the sides of my 8 by 8 inch square. So right now it's like I have a perfect square flip book of however many layers, right, all stacked together. What I need is like a card table in Vegas. I need to play out nine of these cards, nine pages from the flip book. So I need to set that table. So to make the table, this is what Photoshop's good at. It's good at growing from the middle. I go to image canvas size. Make sure that relative is unchecked, right? You'll see your eight by eight inches. That's your existing canvas. We want to change that to 30 inches wide, 40 inches tall which was the same thing we used. It's the largest you know, print, printing press size. It's the same thing we used to give us extra space in assignment one and extra, in assignment two. But here, this is 30 by 40 inches, but it's not at 300 pixels per inch or 350 pixels per inch. It's not a print resolution. This is 30 by 40 inches at 100 pixels per inch, the screen resolution we used for our animation. That's because 30 by 40 inches at 100 pixels per inch, if I uncheck resample and put this at print resolution, is the same as 10 by 13 and a third inches at print resolution. So this will make a print portfolio piece for you of your animation. Does that make sense? Why do we keep it at 30 by 40 instead of print resolution? It's so that we get nice even inches here not just for our guides, but for our gutters, right? So this is layout. So right now I have that, that stack of flipbook pages dead center on this table. And the table has this kind of ugly gray gingham surface to it. I want to make that look nicer because it hurts my eyes, right? And it's hard to see my guides. So I'm going to go to my bottom layer, make a new layer, go to edit, Fill it with white, nice, clean, white tablecloth, 100% white. Make sure that you do it that way, that you don't select white somewhere and fill it with a paint bucket. You need it to be absolutely 100% white. Otherwise, when you print it, it's going to look terrible, like because the printer will print like a cream or a slight off-white. Okay, next. Now I can see my guides clearly, but I want space between them. I want gutters and borders around each each page. So this is where I use a new tool, which is called a grid. It's just like the guide. Remember that you turn on the guides on and off by hitting command semicolon? Well, you can turn on and off the grid, which is always there, by hitting command apostrophe. It's right next to the semicolon. So I want you to turn on your grid. You'll find it under view, show, grid. And that's the shortcut, command apostrophe. It's really ugly, so we don't have it on for very long, but we zoom in to the edge, and then we make a new guide that is exactly one inch from each edge. So once your grid is on and you're set to inches, you go exactly one inch from each edge. And then when you turn it off, command apostrophe, you will see that you have this nice little template with a little slot for your first frame, your second frame, your third frame, fourth frame, fifth frame, sixth frame, seventh frame, eighth frame, ninth frame. They will stick to those guides. They will be perfectly clean. That is called layout. And it really matters if one of those gutters is a slight, slightly different measurement than the others, it looks bad. It kind of throws the professional quality of it off. Okay, to be really basic, I can turn on my very first frame which is right here, frame one. And then I'm going to use my move tool and I'm going to have auto select turned off. And my very first frame is hidden by my middle frame, right? And I'm just going to 
drag and drop it, but it's going to deal from underneath the deck into that slot. That's why it's important to have auto select turned off. My next frame, let's try frame three, because I have more than nine frames, right? So I'm going to select frame three, then deal from the bottom of the deck. That mosquito appears. Yep, so far so good. Let's go to frame six. Jump to frame six. Deal from under the deck. And the mosquito is moving more, and my creature appears. So far so good, right? Or I might decide, oh, frame seven might be better. So let me select frame seven. Is that better? No, I think maybe that's a little too sudden. So I have different options, right? Okay, next, frame eight is my middle. So maybe frame seven goes right here. Or maybe I decide, well, frame eight should really go right here and frame nine should be the middle. And that kind of works. So what comes next? Well, now all of them will appear in the middle. Do I want frame 10 next? No, that's too subtle. That one next, maybe so, frame 11. But he hasn't started to glow yet, so maybe I want one where he starts to glow. So maybe frame 12. So you're just choosing the best way to tell your story. Okay, now I have to move it pretty quickly. So I'm going to go to frame 14. Skip to frame, oh, I can't go to 21 yet. Let's go to frame 17. If you only have nine animation frames, this is really easy to choose, right? Frame 20. But honestly, I really like this frame. So I'm thinking maybe I want to use that one instead of this one. And then maybe I want to use this one instead of that one. Or maybe that's too strong. Maybe this one. <laughs> so it's all just, you know, making selections. Basically, you're trying to make a comic book of your finished animation using film stills. Now, it's kind of obvious, I hope, why I'm not going to use my very last frame, which was that, because that doesn't add much to the comic book. And all these transitional frames where I set to reset, that's not important to the story. And panning moves and stuff aren't really important. The whole important thing is to showcase the transformation. And this starts to showcase that. All right, so now I like this, but this is really important. My assignment is still called my stage file. So I don't want to save it as that, otherwise I lose all my animation work in Photoshop. So I want to save it with a new name. So I say save as, and this will be my third PSD file for this project. And this will be called my refined storyboard. So what are the three PSDs we needed to build this responsibly? an assets file, a stage file, and now a refined storyboard. Save it as a PSD. But I can't put a PSD up to Canvas, right? So what should I save it as, as an online format to go on to Canvas? JPEG. Why? Because it's already has, it's already filled up the whole rectangle. I don't need transparency. I want it to be clean white. So I'm going to say file, save a copy as a JPEG. I'm going to save that to the desktop. And that will be my refined storyboard JPEG. Then I find that on the desktop. I mark that orange. That's what I'm marking my online file types. And I have three online file types. My rough storyboard, my GIF animation, and my refined storyboard. So now we know three online file formats, digital file formats, JPEG, PNG, and GIF. And those are three that are supported by Canvas. So now I say edit, and I can add that third requirement, which is my refined storyboard. And again, I want to shrink it so it fits nicely. 
but this is high enough quality to print at 8 by 10 or even close to 11 by 14. So it's a print version of your animation. Because sometimes you need to show just with a print portfolio your skills. You can't always shove a screen in front of someone's face. Right. All right. Those are the three requirements. Now I want to make sure I save my work and that I have my Photoshop files. So here I have my refined storyboard file. Except that says stage, which bothers me. <laughs> it shouldn't. So I've saved it here as a refined storyboard and I, maybe I saved it a little early. So I'll go back when I saved it. Let's see. You want to make sure that you have your Yeah, here we go. That you have your finished animation because I was setting my frame delays, I was doing the tweens, setting up the tweens, convert to timeline, I saved it as a video. Yeah, so this is a good place to make sure this is saved as my stage file. That's weird because I changed the name. But yeah, you want all three. Baffles me sometimes what happens oh well so yeah and there's a test gif I don't need anymore okay and then my assets file good deal so I'm gonna move that stage file where's my refined storyboard file there it is okay so now I've got all three And then these orange ones, these go to Canvas. So when we do our presentation critique, we'll actually do it at the beginning of next class because I want to introduce our next unit. But when we do our presentation critique, what I'm going to be asking you guys to, to think about and share is whether the transformation that you are required to show shows up better in your animated file or in your refined storyboard because they're, one is using time-based media and one is not, right? So the transformation is very clearly evident in the storyboard, but it takes a little late to, to happen. But I think it's probably even more evident in the video, especially the, the breaking apart of the background, just because uh, controlling the timing really affected that. All right.